Ladies and gentlemen, today's shitty album review is, actually, for an album that is, not, shitty. This album review is going to be for a new one, and it was released just one month ago, on May 31st. We're about to enter July, or you are probably watching this video in July. This album review is for Anathema's brand new album We Are Here, because we are here. Anathema began as a doom metal band back in the early 90s. They had extremely limited western exposure during that point in time. From 1993 to 1996, they put out three notorious doom metal albums, the first two being in the realms of death doom metal because of the slow tempo, vocal style, and song structures. There were many great songs from these albums, including Sleepless, Under a Veil, We the Gods, Mine is Yours to Drown in, Restless Oblivion, The Silent Enigma, Sunset on Age, Angelica, Suicide Veil, and Radiance. For reasons I do not have the answer to, this style became abandoned. Although never losing touch with elements of this original style, those elements had passed over into their alternative rock slash metal alternative era. While having characteristics of mainstream rock or alternative rock, to be a bit more clear, they are simultaneously nothing like the huge slew of those bands in and out of America. If anything, they wipe the floor and ass with numerous hard rock and alternative rock bands from this time frame. In those four albums, after their doom metal phase, there are many moments that make you want to just lay in your room and slip your wrist wide the fuck open, harder than an emo scene bopper crap. Jesus Christ, those losers from Breaking Benjamin, Three Days Grace and Sevenist need some hard-ass schooling from Anathema for emotional resonance, knowing those bands, they'd probably shatter like a Victorian porcelain doll or wind up with the trunchbull biting their noses off their supple Crisco little suburban faces. Seven years ago, they released a very harrowing and existential album called A Natural Disaster. It wasn't much like anything I had ever heard before from this band, or any band in the few years off this album's wake. It was a very emotional experience and no two song sounded the same. Strangely enough, they had no other albums since that one, until now. We are here, because we are here immediately gave me the impression that they were not going to play going to the Grammys rock music, play the style of crap split, and go rest on their shoulder. Why in the name of hell would they do that? None of the songs here are like on their other albums. This album, compared to the others, it shows that Anathema never had a quote-unquote happy song. Now, they have ten songs in their deck that can be considered happy. What the hell am I supposed to do now? Start playing Xbox? Play sports? Watch Good Morning America and Ellen every day? Listen to Heartland music? Because that's what it all sounds like. But to a certain degree, I must add. This change in direction does not eschew all of their previous musical palette. Vincent's voice is still better than the Coldplay singer, the Breaking Benjamin singer and etc. There's a lot of orchestral strings backing these songs and typically, I don't care for large string section arrangements in rock music, because it makes me long for some sort of stimulant or primrose and cedar pixel color palettes. I will address it before someone in the comments starts flying at my eyes that the musical content contained within this album is nowhere near the levels of slack-jawed radio pop that you find with acts, such as that Jason Mirror ass, Cold Cock, Cho Choo Choo, Foo Frat Idiots, The Fratella Tubbies, and etc. My biggest problem was that I was hoping for another brooding captivating listening session like with their last three studio albums, Judgment, A Fine Day to Exit, and A Natural Disaster. Now the entire atmosphere is out of gloom and grooving with the upbeat shit. The opening track sounds like it could be played in a Hollister or Forever 21. You know, those clothing outfitter store for all the fake preps and jocks, whom the preps buy clothes in the other bags for. Summer Night Horizons has some chunky touches of their older heavy style during the verses and just after the bridge. But the bridge sounds like it could be used in a prescription drug commercial or maybe even a goddamn we fit commercial with the I motto and the other guy. Feel so alive, the world is like a jewel in your eye, one life, feeling. But I thought. I long for the death of the sun, another glorious revelation, destiny's plan for ruin. I danced with the shadows, in tranquil chaos, idly naked in the rain, an interception of light. A disturbing memory. Or otherwise, it's. Speak to me, for I have seen, your waning smile, your scars concealed. So far from home, do you know, you're not alone? Sweet tonight, sweet summer light, scattered yesterdays, the past is far away. Everything sounds very reminiscent of that cold play crap you hear on the radio and in malls and airports, but I hear more dynamic range and mobility with this band. The fifth track on this album is called Angels Walk Among Us. It starts with these string section chords which are intended to sound happy, but in reality remind me of this one shitty little neighborhood full of one-story houses next to a farm field and it makes me feel like I could do without sunlight for a good three or four weeks. 
They are talking about their dead mother again, which they did on alternative foreign judgment. After the turning point breaks in halfway through the song there's a set of lyrics in which Vincent utters. Mother can you hear me? Can you tell me are you there? Father can you help me? Cause I know that you can. And I don't have to fight it anymore for all those years we were dreaming and I don't have to worry anymore because I found my belief in. Dot. 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 That's how that set of lyrics is written as well as sung. Because I found my belief in dot. 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 Okay, so apparently, Daniel Kavanaugh believes in God now. Why wouldn't he just say it? Why not just say, because I found my belief in God? Leaving that sentence without end like that makes me interpret it as if he's come to terms with whoever has deceased in his life, but he doesn't believe in God. Why else would he not say God? I guess that's fine, it doesn't take away from the all the songwriting work he has done for this band from 93 to 03, but perhaps he should check out the God Delusion, since it's 2010 and the whole world should relinquish itself from the biggest killer of mankind. It sounds like a fucking Hollywood movie trailer and honestly, Reese Witherspoon and Co's pictures are missing from the liner notes. I don't want to think about large budget Hollywood movies and their depressing plot structures. Why can't movie producers just write their films like Deep Red more often? That way, I won't feel stressed out by the bronze and beige and brown colors at such a large resolution. What do they think they are going to win over a bunch of yuppies? They'll never find out about this band until I'm playing serenades as I'm wiping their asses in a nursing home. There's this British man with a very bad stuttering issue in the successive track which Tripley and organ playing in the background, and then a set of female vocals comes in. A simple mistake is a song which I don't really understand as a composition. I haven't been able to uncover what this, the quote-unquote epic of the album, is supposed to resolve to. The keyboard thing in the second half makes me feel like I'm around a busy shopping center at 6.30 p.m. on a summer weekend with loads of poorly outfitted slovenly families interspersed with decent people and a light sprinkle of diamond in the rough upscale people passing through the area at a much faster rate than the others. And not telling the obese 50-year-old man with a white dress shirt and brown calderoy belted trousers how wasteful it is for him to be as fat as he is. On some sites, I see that some people are dubbing the genre of this album as progressive rock and I don't have the faintest clue what inclined this notion in them. For the longest song on the album, and the rest of it in general, there is nothing here that resembles Prague. I do like the first half of the song Universal which sounds like an old King Crimson song. You know, that one band with this album cover. The worst song out of all ten is probably the eighth song, Get Up, Get Off. It sounds like a song about masturbation and there's this back and vocal track that faintly, audibly whispers I'm bored about two or three times. This is strange at worst, but it's competent as a song element, but the pseudo-authority recitation of the chorus is completely out of character for anathema. Who are they supposed to be now? Hank Yo? The final song is called Hindsight and it is an instrumental, just like violence was. It's in contraction to Universal with its two-minute crescendo and it has some quite convincing leads written to it. You can actually hear Daniel's guitar squeal for a while. And the string bashing part that begins five minutes in sounds very interesting. I just can't stand that British woman speaking during the beginning and end. She sounds terribly preachy. Her voice doesn't fit the song and its production scheme. Overall, I still don't know what to think about this album. This is one of my favorite bands, and this doesn't just seem like a random experimentation. Enough time has passed since their last album to signify this as a whole band change in sound direction. This isn't like Opeth with their Damnation album, returning to their regular style with the successive album. Or maybe this is just an experimental style. It's definitely not the kind of rock and roll album you'd ever hear me listen to, but I've said it before, it's better than those Coldplay and Arctic Monkeys albums. At least they are back as a band 